Yo, what's up everybody? I'm here in New York City. I'm here till Friday and I'm heading down to Florida. Uh, folks, I got to tell you, even even me, even I'm starting, you know, I tell you guys about the, the fiscal flows. Leading flows are very strong. They're up 89 billion over last year. And that's even with, um, I mean, that that's the, the highest year over year uh, positive differential in, since March 3rd, okay? But I gotta tell you, even with uh, with that number, even with, with, with those figures, I mean, I'm sorry, but even me, I'm starting to think that this, this rally is getting a little bit crazy, man, like kind of bubbly, all right? But the put call ratio, if you remember like months ago, I kept saying like, geez, that put call ratio was above one, even though the market kept going up and up and up. And I said, that's probably due to these funds that are trading zero day to expiration options. They're, they're selling them every day. And that's a bullish strategy, right? But now we're finally starting to see the put call ratio come down. I mean, last Wednesday, the reading on the put call ratio was 0 0.66. That was the lowest reading since November 2021. So we're finally starting to see in the options markets uh, readings that reflect, you know, raging bullishness. But if you look at the 10 day average of the put call ratio or the, the 20 day average, it's nowhere near like the low levels we saw in uh, the third and fourth quarter of 2020. Okay, so that thing could still fall a lot. What does that mean? It, it means that bullish sentiment could really still build up to a much higher level. As a matter of fact, even the weekly AAII survey Bullish sentiment is not that elevated. Bearish sentiment is, is low, but I wouldn't say it's extreme. Okay, so if you're just going by market sentiment, I mean, I'm sorry to say this thing looks like it could keep going up. And you got leading flows that are very, very strong, okay? But we started to see the tax train hit. I remember I've been telling you guys about the quarterly uh, corporate tax train that was gonna hit on June 17th, that's today. We started to see some of that drain hit on um, Friday was um, a 30 billion drain, okay? Government, the government's balance for the month of June so far, they are now, the government now is a 10 billion surplus. So a, a surplus is a net transfer to the government, not to the economy. Okay, and that number for sure got a lot bigger today because today was the day that those tax payments were due, okay? So let me sum it all, all up for you. I say that despite the fact that leading flows are very strong, and I know, you know, and I've been saying that's been the main fundamental driver, right? I explained it last week, the water coming out of the pipe at a, at a, a lot of volume at a high rate, okay? For me personally, um the the net the net flow the the drain sorry I, I mean i just think this rally is really really speculative now i look back at march uh because march was a, a period also when we had the same kind of conditions and it went until late march and then we had a six, uh, almost a 7% correction in the S&P. I think we could see the same thing, like, you know, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not, but we're coming into a, a, an area, not an area, but we're coming into a condition now, a monetary condition now, 
And when I say monetary, I don't, I'm not talking about interest rates, okay? I'm talking about fiscal monetary. We're coming into a monetary condition now where, yeah, leading flows are very strong, but net flows that's being sucked out. And so, you know, I, I think the market's like on a, on a two-legged stool right now or a three-legged stool with, with one that's about to break. That's how I look at it. So what, do, what am I doing? I'd rather sit on the sidelines or selectively buy stocks that haven't really participated in this rally yet. I still like the banks, okay? I still like energy on a pullback. I still like the home builders, all right? Um, the tech, I'll buy it when it comes down. Apple, I'll buy it when it comes down. Nvidia, I'll buy it when it comes down. Microsoft, I'll buy it when it comes down. By the way, remember back in, um, gosh, when was that? Uh, back in April, okay? When Meta, formerly called Facebook, Meta came out with earnings and everybody was like, oh my God, these earnings are terrible. And they trashed the stock, they crashed it down. It went all the way down to the 400 teens. It was up in the five somethings. It went all, you know, I was buying down then and now it's back up over 500 bucks. The only reason I mention this, okay, it's because it's very instructive from time to time because, you know, we can all get caught up in this uh, FOMO, emotional state fear of missing out i talked to a lot of people during the course of the day like mike should i buy i, I can't you know like it's going up what are we going to do should i should i and what i try to do is impart some perspective it's really you know because i understand look I, i'm human like everybody else the urge to jump in right now for a lot of people is enormous because you're seeing it go up every single day. By the way, this morning it was down, okay? The markets were down, but you've basically been seeing it going up every single day. And for a lot of people, remember, I've been in this game, you know, a long time, more than 40 years. So I've seen it all, folks. Uh, but for a lot of people, it's really, really hard. And they look at this and they're kicking themselves and they're beating themselves up and they're like, I gotta get in, I gotta get in. I'm trying my best to tell you guys to have discipline, self-control, patience. You will have an opportunity, okay? Um, so what I was saying is like, I'm looking at stocks that haven't really participated in the rally now, I like, I mentioned that before, I think I lost my train of thought, but I understand that it's very, very difficult for most people. And so, oh, I know what I was saying. I was saying, remember when Meta crashed down? I was saying that it's important as an exercise to remind yourself of things like that, of opportunities like that. Like the market gave you an opportunity. It gave us an opportunity to buy that stock when it came out. By the way, the earnings when that came out in April, the Meta actually beat forecasts. But it, of course, it was construed in the media and the financial, you know, all, all the blogs and everything that, oh, this is terrible. This is horrible. And I said at the time, you got to go with that. I said it was a great thing because they're kind of like, they're looking past, they were looking past the short term and they were investing in the long term with their AI, all right? It's very important to go back and revisit those situations because that hopefully gives you some perspective, helps you in your personal battle to stay disciplined and stay non-emotional and have some perspective. Like when you see, yeah, the market gives opportunity if you're patient. Remember, I always talk about the crouching tiger in the, in the brush, 
waiting for its prey to walk by, silent, crouching. That's how you have to be, the crouching leopard in the deep jungle, waiting for its prey to walk by unsuspected. That's how you have to be. The market will give you opportunity. And as an exercise, I'm telling you guys, Go through that in your head, like remind yourself of these situations. Because if you don't remind yourself of these situations, it's very easy to get caught up in the hype and the euphoria. And also on the downside, it's very easy to get caught up in the panic. You know, I'll bring up uh, late 2022, when the market was crashing every single day. And I said, look, we're gonna reach an inflection point where the rate hikes, the negative impact of the rate hikes to financial assets will transition to positive because of the interest income transfers. Nobody, very few people wanted to understand that or go with that at the time. I had people, I had people telling me like, I can't take it anymore. I'm selling out. This thing's going down. I'm, I'm selling out. And it was just like, it's really important to remember these times and put things in perspective because you got to fight against your own impulses because your impulses are going to do you in. They're going to submerge you. And believe me, I have empathy towards every single one of you. I know it's really, really hard. But how many times have I said, if the market was a person, if it was a living thing, its goal would be to fool you. And it would be unmatched in terms of its ability to do that out of anything that exists in the universe. That's what it does. You gotta fight against that urge. It's hard, I know it's hard, but I'm trying to give you little tricks I'm trying to give you little tips to help you. And it doesn't help to look at it all the time. Because when you look at it, you know, when, when you shrink everything down to a micro moment, that moment might look unsurmountable to you. Like the pressure becomes infinite. When you step away, sometimes just stepping away gives you a great perspective too. Like you don't even have to uh reflect back on what happened to meadow or something else or october 2022 when it was crashing and now look at it i mean there are a lot of tricks you could do and i think the easiest trick is to step away you're gonna make money i guarantee you will make money if you follow what i'm saying it's it's all about self-control it's not about the market. It's not about which stock you buy. Well, sometimes it is, but I always say, buy the good name companies that are leaders in their industries that have a, a history of profitability. That's not so hard. Everybody, you know, if you buy my course, um, MMT and value stock selection, I show you how to, it's very easy how to select stocks based on a, on a valuation basis. Okay, it's on my website and I'm not I'm not pumping or promoting it. If you don't want it, that's fine. I'm just saying it's not some some secret magical thing, but the, the hard part is the self-control. The hard part is mastering yourself. And it's you know, that is I'm I'm telling you this as a guy with all my experience, okay, five decades. And I'm telling you, like, sometimes it gets hard even for me. So, now, I do a lot of things outside of this, you know, field of economics and investing that I put myself into challenging situations physically where I have to use, you know, mental mind over body whether it's boxing or hiking, stuff like that. I, I put myself into those situations and, and it's very, very helpful to do things like that. It's also very beneficial for your health. Uh, and that helps me. I don't know, like you might have other things that you do 
that's great. You might have things that take your mind off it. Maybe you're creative, maybe you paint, uh, maybe you're good with, uh, you know, uh, building things or whatever, but whatever it is, whatever can help is good, but it's like, it's either taking your mind off of it or subjecting yourself to difficulty and hardship and resilient, you know, having to, having to go through pressure and, and uh, being more resilient. Sounds silly, but it helps. If you're sitting there looking at the screen all day long, like that is a monumental effort insofar as holding your emotions at bay. Sometimes it's good just to get separation. All right, separation. I mean, I'm here in New York City. You walk through the city, everything seems overwhelming. The, the tall buildings, the crowded streets, the people walking, the noise, everything. When you're flying over this in an airplane at 30,000 feet or 15,000 feet or whatever, and you're looking down and you see like, you know, even, even the World Trade Center, the so-called Freedom Tower, and I hate that stupid name, it's called the World Trade, it looks like a little thing, okay? All these buildings, they look like a little thing. That's the 30,000 foot perspective I talk about. You gotta train yourself to see things like that. Otherwise you're gonna get so micro wrapped up in the situation that your, your brain is not gonna be able to process it. You're just gonna, you're gonna be working from the primitive part of your brain, the limbic system, which is just reaction. It's just fight or flight. You want to work with, with the frontal cortex, the intelligent part, the rational part. You've got to engage that. And the way to engage that is separation, is perspective. I'm telling you, folks, I'm really trying to help you guys here. I hope you understand that. I'm not touting myself or my, my stuff. I'm really trying to help you guys here. Sincerely, this is what I talk about. This is the most important thing. Anyway, that's it for today. Um, please like and subscribe. A lot of you have been doing that and I really appreciate it. It helps the channel a lot. It helps me. I mean, it's just when I see that, I'm very gratified and encouraged to keep on doing it. So thank you. And if you care to, you can go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com and sign up for a 30-day free trial for MMT Trading, all right? Everything's gonna be okay. We're all gonna make some money. All right, see you tomorrow, bye.